because they saw me do something. I've got enough to answer for when I get to heaven without causing somebody to stumble, fall, and scatter. I, I would never be involved with anybody in the church that was interested in causing trouble in the church over some something. Oh, if it's over doctrine or over immorality or something, that's a different story. But just all this little picky, picky stuff that goes on inside of churches, the little gossips and all the rest, you don't ever get involved with them people. They are not really good Christian people. And you're you're going to hurt somebody. Don't let it ever be said that Don Green caused trouble in the church. And don't you ever let it be said about you that you're a troublemaker, a wave maker in the church. You overlook a lot of things without causing a lot of trouble. I, I'd rather, I don't want to be a stumbling block, but I'd like to be is a standard bearer for the standards and the things that are right and, and for to be a strength and a stabilizer in the church and uh, have scruples and don't cause any problems. Pastors got all they can handle say grace over just to say grace over what he's doing without somebody <coughs> gossiping or somebody laying a charge against somebody, why don't you just shut up? That's nice. And Christian love, I said that. <laughs> In your life is full of Christianity. You will not be a, a stumbling block. You will be a stepping stone. You will ring out the goodness of God. Please listen to me. I, I hope I'm not a bore tonight. I, I'm doing what God told me to do with her. Yeah, please. I, I, I didn't. This is God, and I'm just doing what He told me to do. But you want to be guided by what you do and what you say and where you go and what kind of decisions you make. First of all, don't go against the Bible. And secondly, don't grieve the Holy Ghost. And, and thirdly, don't do anything that won't bring glory to God. And fourthly, don't be scattering, but don't be gathering. Don't be scattering, but be gathering folks into the house of God and not cause anybody to stumble. And the next thought I had was guidance would be, don't get involved with anything that would gain control over you, something that would be habit-forming. Right. It was said by Paul, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the of any. I believe it was Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said that the chains of sin are too weak to be felt until too strong to be broken. These addictions, you know, swearing is an addiction. You get into that swearing business and it'll be an addiction just like drugs. You get into involved in the, in strong drink and it'll take over your body and your mind and wreck and ruin your life, your marriage, your children and everything else involved around about you. Don't ever get involved in whatever your decision is. Don't take a hold of anything that could gain hold of you. Like I say, that satanic rock music you get involved in that and it's an addiction. And you just gotta have that rough music. My wife, it was before I married her, they were, her husband was killed. 
they were involved in the children's homes. They were involved in girls' homes and boys' homes. And she said that it was easier to get them off the drugs than it was off the rock music. It gets involved in your blood and your thinking. Some of these jerks get these big old blast baffles and speakers in their car. And I don't know how they could even hear it drive. You know, you have to see it drive, but I don't know how they could hear it drive. It gets right down deep inside of your mind that you just got to have this sort of thing even though it's destroying your life and other people around about you. I, um, I feel so sorry for people that get involved in sex, illicit sex. It is, it's, it's habit forming. And you could become a whoremonger. You, you could very well uh, get so deep in it that you become a pervert. You could get so involved that you would uh, be a child molester. Now, if there is a child molester here tonight, I don't know what's going to become of you. They tell me that those people that get involved in that never get cured from it. Never get cured from it. So you could be very well already, like it said here in our text, captured under the power of this terrible drawing. And just last week, one of my, one of the missionaries that we support was put in prison for child molesting. What a testimony for God. What an awful thing. And him and his, his wife and children are just a war that's absolutely ruined. And I know your mind is like anybody else's mind. But if you keep watching that damnable stuff on the internet, and you keep watching them DVDs and PDQs, if you keep messing around with that stuff, you could come as Paul said here, I will not be brought under the bondage and the power of any. I'm talking to you tonight about uh, how to be guided, and I'm very plain about it. Uh, just don't go against the Bible. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Bring glory to God out of your life. Don't uh, scatter, but gather folks in the church. And uh, don't uh, uh, get a hold of anything you can't control yourself. I, uh, I feel sorry for you that's already involved in some vice of some sort. I do know that sin is stronger than good sense. I know too that uh, this is my thoughts of the old preacher. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Amen. You'll stay longer than you want to stay. And you'll pay more than you want to pay. Another thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm about done, I'm, I know my time is up, but I want to say another good thing to figure when you're trying to make up a, a decision. Would it guard my testimony? Would it hurt my testimony? Paul said, ye are, ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Oh, my, our testimony. My testimony means more to me than anything else in my life. I believe I would die, more willingly to die, than to dip my colors and hurt my testimony. When I, I say that, I'm as sincere as I can be. It's taken me 61 years to build a testimony. You know how long it would take to lose it? Five minutes or less, it's gone. 61 years building it. All I'd have to do is take one glass of beer. Just one cigarette. 